The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Friday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN 906 a.m. As we come into the trading week, we got a long weekend to prepare for as well. Markets close Monday for President's Day. And we got right now the S&P's up two points, trading at 43.77. NASDAQ up 27 points. Dow negative by 10 points right now. Russell positive by two. Markets across the board had been higher. You check out the action. They accelerate at about 10.30 p.m. Eastern time. S&P's trade from about 43. 70 up to 44.10. You're talking about 40 points, almost a full percentage point. We held on to most of those gains. We're sitting right at about 4,400 at 8 a.m. Eastern time. And then uh, some news, geopolitical news, tensions rat ratcheting up yet again, uh, and the markets sell off pretty quickly. 40 S&P points, we give it up. Since then, we've bounced 20 points. We got volatility in spades, quite the sell-off yesterday as well. You jump over to the VIX, almost made it to 29 this morning, 28.66. That's above yesterday's high. We are sitting at 27.44. Commodities, Bitcoin, currencies, quite the acceleration news out yesterday i think president biden is going to sign an executive order having to do with cryptos possibly next week i saw that headline uh hitting the tape and uh markets on the crypto sector along with the whole market right never a good thing when you got executive orders coming for crypto at the same time as you get the nasdaq 100 trading off three percent you had the Bitcoin trade off 10% almost from 44,000 down to 40,000. We take a look at Bitcoin on a weekly basis. We've just jumped off the low of 32,000. Uh, excuse me, what is what is MBT? There we go. Um, yeah, and so yes, that's a bounce there on a weekly basis. We put it back on the daily. You can see the bounce off the trend to lower prices, but boy, we give it up pretty quickly off that 45,000 mark on Bitcoin. If you've got executive orders coming next week, Government regulation, always a potential headwind in the crypto sector. Crude oil, under $90. What's going on in that market? We haven't seen this price in crude going back to February 3rd, not that long ago, two weeks ago, folks. Slight pullback. I mean, you want to see the type of pullbacks that are possible still uh, in a bull market run? You take a look at the run we've had. This is just going back to, it's the most conservative estimate, you could say, December 20th, when crude starts its run from 66 bucks up to 95 a 3A2 brings us back to about 85 bucks. That's where you chopped around for a bit late January. 85 bucks, all but natural. We're three dollars away from that area right now, and that would just be your 3A2 of the entire run that we've got since just December 20th, folks. You're talking about basically two months of action on that crew contract. We jump to gold. Gold's been having quite a week, sitting right at about 1900 bucks. Gold up at 1899.50 right now. You got silver up 10 pennies as well, 23.97. And we jump to the all-important notes and bonds, and we're getting a little bit of a reprieve right now. You got the 10-year right now. What are we up? Six ticks at 126.19. You're talking about a yield, 1.93%. I think we're sitting, what was it, 2.03, at least 2.06. Um, a few ticks at least above 2% yields. We give up 10 basis points, uh, a tenth of a percentage point in the 10-year in a matter of a couple days uh, as geopolitical risks ratchet up across the globe really in the Ukraine, right? Um, so where do we start in terms of the headlines? Let's start with what moved this market at 8 a.m. Now, this story out there at about 2 a.m., but it had to do with women and children getting evacuated from the far east in Ukraine. Um, and let me see if I can get the exact verbiage there because Yeah, I'll pull it up to get the exact verbiage in terms of women and children, but not exactly the de-escalation that we had going on a couple days ago. You got the U.S. saying Russia massed up to 190,000 personnel on their borders, uh, significant, most significant military mobilization since World War II. We'll see how it goes, folks. I mean, the market reacted yesterday, that's for sure. Taking a look at the NASDAQ, we put it on a five-day, man. 
you get a small reprieve yesterday up to 14,550, man. You gave up 400 points in the NASDAQ, and there was no positive action whatsoever. You got a 50-point bounce at about 1045 in the morning, and that was literally about it as this market sold off the entire day. Uh, don't be surprised if we get a bounce again today. <laughs> because you know you get pullbacks this quick. I was talking to my dad. He makes some great points. We're right back to a similar area. Maybe you can creep down to fourteen thousand in the Nasdaq. Very possible. Um, but we have some pretty dramatic selling yesterday, especially when you trade from fourteen thousand six nineteen. We are four hundred and fifty points above that uh, below above below that price level right now. You're talking about three percent in a day. It's a lot of selling. And we are now right back to where we were prior to the de-escalation acceleration higher. All right. Now, the one thing that I will say is if we back this out, uh, we come into the end of the year basically sitting at all-time highs in the NASDAQ 100 I'm taking a look at. I mean, just from where we were January 4th, okay, taking a look at the bounce we've gotten. Made it right up to the 50% right there. The 382 is sitting at about 14,879. We're almost back to that level. You take a look at the S&Ps for some context here in terms of the bounce. We got a much higher bounce because you didn't get as far as, far of a pullback. Uh, and where do you rest this, right? Maybe the bodies, maybe the tails. You could be, if you bring it down to the tail from 4808 down to the flash low we got on January 24th. Interestingly, you're right at the 618, right? I'll leave it there. Right at the 618, you can see that bounce on two occasions. Got up to about 4581 before we sold off yet again. If you take it as where the bodies line up, you're hovering around the 50% on that level. But nonetheless, we're going to see where we go. We're pretty close to these levels. You're talking about 70 points away from where we were in the S&Ps in terms of that price level. 4300 is where we were towards the end of January. We're sitting at 4371. But my expectation is that people have wisened up to the fact that the words meant pretty much nothing earlier in the week from President Putin and that actions are what speaks volumes. And if you back things up, uh, we are basically right back at the weekly lows that we came into. So maybe that's where we find a bid right now. If I was in this market today, I'd be possibly looking for a bid early. Not sure I want to be long over the weekend, though, with a three-day weekend and war potentially on the verge of ensuing. Um, yeah, we'll leave it at that. All right, let's jump around to some of the stocks. We got some companies with earnings or lack of earnings, we'll call it. Uh, started off with DraftKings. So gambling, not quite there yet. Forecast and customer growth disappoint. So DraftKings is dramatically lower. We're going we're gonna to get into Roku, which is really dramatically lower as well. But this, I guess this one's a pretty chunk uh, lower as well. You're down $3.50 right now. That's almost going to be a 15% acceleration lower on the open. You take a look at DraftKings. I've been talking about it, man. You, if you liked it at 22, you might love it at 18. Kind of joke, but remarkable. You've pulled back this far. Now at 18 bucks. You're talking about a valuation market cap wise of $7 billion. Folks, we're approaching the level that, yes, they may take some time to make some money. But boy, when you get down to, you know, four, four or $5 billion for a company like DraftKings, they're going to lose some money. But man, they're going to make money in the long run. They are going to have some competition, but they have a brand, folks. They have a brand that's going to be around. They might have some competition from like an ESPN app, right? An MGM app, something like that. But DraftKings is a big one, and they're trading at 18, your low 1741. We'll get into their numbers after the break. We'll get into Roku. Whew, I want to talk about Max Payne, man. Roku, back to 104. We'll talk about this one as well. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. 
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We're going to talk a little Virgin Galactic space. Uh, so the sen sensational man himself, we'll call him Chamath Palahapitaya, Hapitaya, maybe. I probably blew that one. But either way, uh, he's out there scamming everybody, folks. It's pretty dramatic what SPACs have allowed people to do. Um, the reason why people love SPACs is because you can make forward-looking statements that you would never be able to make in an IPO. This one is such a, a poster boy case for it. So he's now stepping down from the board of Virgin Galactic. He sold a bunch of shares already prior. Uh, that article, we're going to jump to it. So he sold a bunch of shares going back in March of last year. Uh, and you had the company drop 10% then after he dumped almost a quarter billion dollars of shares. Now, the interesting part here is he does that back in last March. Um, he still owns shares through Social Capital Head of Sophia Holdings. And that's a SPAC that he formed with fellow investor Ian Osborne. But what I want to show you here is, so there's the article of him stepping down today, okay, on the board. Now, here is a chart of the equity, okay? You're below the $10 standard on SPACs. You're sitting at 9 bucks. okay? Made it up to 62 bucks early last year. Made it up to 53 bucks when they actually pushed Branson into space ahead of Bezos. Uh the price that Chamath got on his shares, folks, okay? He sold his shares last March. So here's the article dated March 5th, 2021. I mean, regulators need to do something about this because this is the stuff that was created so that, you know, rich, wealthy, powerful people couldn't swindle investors out of their money by promising things in companies for public raising of funds that was just not true. Okay, so they talked this all up, folks. They cashed out big time, at least Chamath did. Uh, the point is, he dumped these shares. He had 6.2 million shares is what he sold, okay, uh, Tuesday and Wednesday. So this is around March 5th. Now, 6.2 million shares netted him $213 million. So he got an average price for his shares when he was selling that of 30 four dollars and 35 cents i believe let me do that again i just did it prior but i want to get the exact number because it's pretty staggering how much money he siphoned out of this public company 34 dollars and 35 cents was the average price that he sold his 6.2 million shares at 34 dollars and 35 cents folks there is the chart of 34 dollars and 26 cents okay zoom it in there's 34 
34. 33, 34, you get the point. Just just a, a couple of weeks were over this level. He basically got better prices than most of the public did. Yeah, you could have cherry picked a couple tops if you happened to time that thing, but who knew it was gonna stop at 60 and not 600 with the way meme stocks were going back then. Now, in many companies, you can say, well, he deserves that money, right? He brought the thing to public. He, brought, uh, he established the SPAC that got it done. There's value created there. That's an argument you can make. But here's the problem with that, okay? You got a company here that's a public company. You got a pub company here with 258 million shares outstanding. At nine bucks a pop, you got a company valued with a market cap of $2.3 billion, okay? And you got the founders siphoning out 155 million. Okay, now 155 million, folks, is the money Chamath got for his 6.2 million shares trading out at 34 and change versus what he deserves right now at nine dollars and change 155 million dollars is what he pocketed by selling to the public okay at irrational prices now that company has that much less funds to compete in the public arena it's just unfortunate folks it's going to keep happening SPACs are able to talk up crazy stuff remarkable this is going to be a poster boy for it they're trading at nine bucks you see the volume coming in this week okay we'll put it back to a 15 minute you're even a little bit lower today this thing was up to 11 bucks right now they started taking deposits i think on tuesday uh, hundred and hundred and fifty thousand dollar deposit for a ticket price of 450 grand i think don't get into this equity, folks. Anytime you see that, you got founders in there, you got Chamath, who's scamming everybody with his SPACs. Um, you know, be aware of that. This stock is under $10 now. When you see this stuff, you see irrational things happening. It's a real bummer, though, that that's able to happen because he's got more money than he ever needs. And that's just a straight scam, folks. Pushing this out to the public, getting it up at those prices, selling off your shares, ditching your board seat, and taking the hundreds of millions of dollars from a company that's only valued at $2 billion. You're talking about. 10 to 15 percent of their market cap just disappearing because shares were given out to founders that cash in as opposed to holding it and you cash in to retail investors buying shares in your public company that are basically getting swindled yeah uh not surprising he's checking down from the board and i would stay away from all of that guy's investments that is my take all right, what else we got going on? Getting back into the DraftKings numbers, because it's going to be interesting to see how they open, folks. And and I would be looking at DraftKings here. I would. Uh, you're trading at 1850. If you haven't got any action in DraftKings yet, I would not be buying my full position at these prices at all. But I would be scaling in because you got a company now that's valued at seven billion dollars, and they have a serious valuation in future terms. You know, if you take a longer term investment goal, then I would think that we are nearing prices. When you're at a, a level of $7 billion, uh, in the context of what some companies and growth companies are worth today, that just doesn't seem like that much in terms of, yeah, it could be worth four or $5 billion. But in the long run, I imagine there's gonna be some gambling companies out there that are worth well over $10 billion. Fewer new customers, not what you wanna hear though, to break down the real news, uh, had expected even after spending hundreds of millions of dollars to lure new better spending that will continue to generate deep losses this year. Fast market at 12 noon Eastern time, folks. Kevin Hinks had some great points yesterday. He was talking about it, competition is stiff and that is gonna eat into margins. He made some great points. I was listening to his program. I was thinking about uh, potential bullish trade on DraftKings coming into the earnings. Decided to uh, take a back seat and watch that one play out. And I'm happy I did. Uh, thanks to our man, Kevin Hanks. Check it out, folks. 12 noon Eastern time. Outstanding program. Analysts were looking for 2.1 million monthly payers, according to the estimates. Uh, average of 2 million is what they came in. That's quite a miss when you're talking about 100,000 people on a monthly basis. Company also forecast adjusted loss, excluding some items in the range of eight to 900 million bucks this year. Not that bad. Steeper than what the market was looking for. Uh, in the present environment, where tech investors have displayed zero tolerance for large losses, they're getting punished. And that's, I uh, can't deny that. Sports betting has spread to an increasing number of U.S. states since the Supreme Court struck down the federal ban in 2018. It's going to explode, folks. It's a good area to be in. And I imagine they are going to have a presence as one of the leaders in this market. Uh, you'll probably see ESPN have an app in some degree. Disney's talked about maybe licensing that brand to a sports app. You have, of course, the, the casinos, BetMGM I've seen out there. Let alone fantasy, which will be around forever. They're gonna be spending some money to grow in the gambling arena, but man, it's around forever, folks. And young kids love to gamble too. So you're gonna get some gamblers, you're gonna have them for life. And the whole land 
escape. Nobody played online poker for many, many years. Uh, the whole landscape is about to change, and it's because uh, about to become completely normalized. All right, almost in the way that poker was. Ian was running online poker all the time. Uh, NBC had poker after dark were exploding and they were willing to pay for that content to put it online poker after dark uh world poker tour all that stuff it was everywhere i'm not sure sports betting is going to take over like that because sports betting has been around forever but you're going to see it take over the airwaves like we've never imagined <coughs> it already has in terms of espn if you watch enough espn programming you're going to start having in live betting right europe was big on in live betting uh it's gonna take over folks DraftKings, seven billion dollars we're up a little bit right now even maybe somebody's listening to me talk in the last 15 minutes as DraftKings just traded from 1832 to 19 bucks are you I having fun trading the markets but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We get the markets open. We get the S&Ps right now up by two points. NASDAQ 100 up by 36. We get the Dow negative by 66 points right now. Going to be interesting to see how this market reacts on the open with the volatility we've had in two directions going on this week. Uh, so getting back to that exact headline that kind of hit the market at 8 a.m. this morning, 
to surmise the exacts of it. And what it was was Ukraine separatists, okay? So children, women, and elderly people began leaving for Russia due to an escalation in fighting along the line of contact with Ukrainian forces. The leader of the self-proclaimed uh, Donetsk People's Republic said the separatists have an agreement with the government of the neighboring Russian region of Rostov to host people. Uh, yeah, and the Organization for Security of and Co- operation in Europe has observed a spike in violence. So they're separatists and they're basically saying they're getting ready for the war to begin and they're sending the women and children out of that region to an area in Russia that they have an agreement that they can be hosted there. So that is what happened at 8 a.m. to sum it up. Not a good development in any way. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, as in, yeah, we're catching a little bit of a bit and that's, you know, we've, we've sold off so much, folks. It is priced in. Anybody with real money in this market better figure out Tensions are pretty high, man. It's a bummer. In the U.S., you're seeing all this politicized, saying that Biden's making it up and all this stuff. Uh, very unfortunate what's happening with, with politics these days. Um, but we have a real potential humanitarian crisis going on. We'll see how it plays out, but there is a real risk of it, folks. Uh, the market recognizing that finally and pricing things down by a few percent yesterday alone in the NASDAQ 100. Right now, you get the NASDAQ 100 up by 32 points, the Dow negative by 46, S&Ps positive by four. Let's jump around to some of those companies with earnings and see how they're reacting on the open. You got DraftKings uh, up almost a dollar from when we were just chatting at it in 9.15. DraftKings trading down 13% though, quite a haircut. We jump over to Roku. Whoops, R-O-K-U is their symbol. 22.7%. Roku also catching a bid, though, on that open there as the market saying maybe maybe 25% was a little too much. We're more comfortable with a 23% hit uh, for Roku. Now, Roku had to do with, they're chatting about it in the den. Uh, I mean, Dave White, he's saying, I don't know how they're going to make money. Well, the market's wondering that a little bit, especially if they have supply chain issues. Uh, because, man, Roku... Yeah, 26% at one point, better than expected earnings, but they missed on revenue and it issued a weaker than expected outlook due to higher component prices and supply chain disruptions. Uh, but boy, 22%, you back this thing up, let's put it on a five year weekly. You're at 111. Roku was trading at 77 bucks in October of 2018. Roku was trading at 176 in September of 2019. Uh, and you're talking about right now a company that is valued at, excuse me, as I find it, 14.9. So $15 billion, uh, that company at 110, $15 billion. I mean, simple math, you were four and a half times higher. Right now you're at 15, what's that, 60, 65, $70 billion. They were pushing at, folks, you are nearing the area. If you're an executive in Roku, you better believe that you're actually probably worried that you're gonna start getting maybe takeover bids. They might not be making money right now, but they are a portal to streaming. And you got some of the biggest tech giants out there uh, that would probably love to have that type of built-in connectivity to control streaming boxes. You probably have some antitrust concerns if you got some of the biggest streamers out there controlling how you access streaming and probably cutting off access to their streaming competitors. But boy, you're dealing with valuations that are much more likable is that the right word? Uh, at 110, then at 490, even if you're not growing as fast as they wanted to and you're dealing with some supply chain issues uh, because that company's at $15 billion and they are gonna be around, folks. You know, when you're looking longer term investing, one of the questions I like to ask myself right away is, is this company gonna be around? You know, do they have a place in economic business that it would be very hard to do away with? And yes, Roku has a place within streaming that would be very hard to do away with because they are the leader in, you know, set top box streaming. Uh, I was listening to Fast Market again yesterday and they were talking about in many of the smart box, smart TVs, you have Roku technology in there, even though you may not know that. So yeah, it's a max pain situation here, man. You're down at 110. The poor people that were buying this thing at 300 to 500, man. Whew. Uh, and not, you know, even from yesterday, I was talking about it. Said you could scale into this thing. And if you were scaling, I hope you scaled small. And uh, you'd want to give yourself, you know, three, four times, folks, to scale in when you have this type of volatility going on. I mean, you could always take a position if you're looking to invest long term, right? And you're you're at a point in the market that you're very worried that we have much further to go potentially, right? And you might think so, and you might be right when you look at a chart of the NASDAQ 100, even pre-pandemic, folks, okay? If you think the irrational fears for the growth stocks 
were irrational during the bottom of the pandemic lows, which were probably correct. Everything got sold off because of margin, because of everything, right? So those those numbers probably not fair, especially how some of the big tech companies had fared since then. But even if you take the pre number, you just went from ten thousand to fourteen thousand in about two years. You better believe pullbacks are possible. You could just scale in once a quarter, maybe you decide. If you're gonna buy S&P futures, you wanna scale in for retirement. You don't wanna put it all in right now or something like that. You could scale in over every month. You decide to apply X percentage over every month, one twelfth of your position. You can do similar things like that if you have cash and you wanna get into some of these equities that have really been hit hard because yeah, I mean, canopy comes to mind, man. This stock, right? You could have been trying to scale in this thing from 30 bucks thinking you're getting a bargain, from 20 bucks thinking you're getting a bargain. So never be afraid to go a little small. The only thing you're risking there is opportunity cost if the stock gets away from you and you have profits in your partial position. That's the only risk, that you don't build the full position you want in some of these equities. Zoom comes to mind. Zoom, new lows. Again, on a weekly basis, right? Check that out. You're talking about a low this week of 128.93. This stock was at almost 600, folks, and they make money, but they don't make as money as the market thought they were going to win. It was at 588. Pretty remarkable. We also have John Deere out with their numbers this morning. A little bit of volatility. We trade lower on the open. We're down just 1% right now for John Deere. You take a look at the three-year weekly on this thing. I talked to Kevin yesterday because they were talking about this on their program. Just been chopping around for a while. We near all-time highs. We make it to a high last week of 399.73 within a dollar of those highs we got last year. And since then, we've pulled back a bit. But John Deere, uh, pretty tame after their earnings. I think it was last night or this morning. Maybe this morning? Yeah, this, uh, yes, this morning uh, with their numbers. And what is it? Let's 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 pull up. There they are. Uh, two ninety two a share. Market was looking for two twenty six. Revenue top forecast as well, and they raised its annual profit forecast amid solid demand and higher prices. Man, you talk about like barely getting rewarded, if not even punished. You get the market lower, so that's playing into things potentially with the Dow off twenty five points. But John Deere with some pretty solid numbers and uh, barely holding on to the price action. You're down almost one percent right now. Shake Shack out with their numbers as well. Let's see, CNBC out there, always with the best updates. Uh, adjusted quarterly loss of 11 cents a share, narrower than the 11 cent loss analysts were anticipating. I think that seems like right in line, actually. While the restaurant's chain revenue matched forecast, Omicron variant kept customers away and led to some temporary restaurant closures. Can't deny that, issued a downbeat current quarter forecast amid increasing costs. And yeah, you're getting punished on this thing, man. What? Looks like the market, not not just ready to punish these stocks too much as you get a little bit of a pop. You're down 7.3% for Shake Shack. You take a look at the weekly, man. Quite a pullback from 138 on the highs about a year ago. You're trading down 7.4%. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. We'll go over some other equities. We're coming into the long weekend. We got Monday off. We'll be right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got the market selling off a little bit. s and is negative seven points right now. You're coming in right near pre-market session lows. s and P's actually hit a low here of 43.59. You're trading right now at 43. Too many buttons here. We have all the and hopefully we got me. Come on, catch up, chats. All right. Well, while we're waiting for those, hopefully you can still hear me. I think so. Uh, but we'll jump to some of the other companies that have their numbers out there. Oh no, we're, we're I'm jumping around. Here we go. We just caught up. Okay. Let me say. Let me reset my camera here. Make sure you got me. So unfortunately, I'm dealing with a couple internet issues this morning as the market's trading fast. Uh, and there we go. We should be back with the NASDAQ, negative 68 points. That's quite a drop off. So much for that bid on the open. We just dropped about 100 points on the open. 14,218 uh, was the opening high print. We're trading 14,104 right now. S&P is negative six right now. We jumped to some of those companies with earnings. DraftKings down 18% right now. Roku shares down 21.1% right now. Uh, John Deere. Their numbers, trading lower as well, down 1.5% right now. Shake Shack down 8.8%, even catching a bid on the open right now. Uh, Dropbox out with their numbers, I believe, as well. DBX is their symbol. Trading higher, up 1.3% after their numbers were out last night. They were down to 21.56. I was jumping around to Airbnb. Uh, they're getting punished today, down 2.6%. Delta Airlines right now, so is travel getting punished? Maybe just the growth stocks. Delta's flat right now. Boeing shares down about seven tenths percent. Disney shares down three tenths percent right now. Uber shares down about six tenths percent right now. DoorDash with their numbers Wednesday night. Just remarkable, man. Strong, strong numbers. And just like that, we give up $25, $26. We gave it up almost all yesterday. But you're back to 100 bucks. You were up to 131. You were at 95 when you came into their numbers uh, for DoorDash. All right, and jumping around to what else we have going on in the stocks. Uh, let's see, Intel, their CEO told Investor Gathering, aiming to achieve double-digit annual revenue growth in three to four years. They may be interested in participating in a potential consortium if one is formed to buy British Semiconductor Arm Limited. Intel, well, they were lower. Well, that's the last thing investors want to hear is you're going to be spending money to buy competitors. 4.5% now as things accelerate on the open there. And boy, this chart, man. You remember when this thing accelerated from 44 bucks up to where were we last year? I mean, look at this. Look at the technicals on this, folks. 69.29, January of 2020. We make it up to 68.40 within a dollar of that price level. Let's back it up even further on a five-year weekly. Boy, you're looking for a buy on Intel, man. 45 bucks is a nice area of support on Intel. Now, 
you know, when you go longer term, right? I got I got trading down here October 22nd of 2018, the week of, you actually make it to 4236. But you're only talking about $3, man, on Intel. You haven't traded below 4236 since the beginning of 2018. You haven't traded below $42 since 2017. Five years on Intel, you have an area of possible price support. Now, you know, if you're trading longer term, maybe you can scale in there because you trade below this, $35 is right in the cards there. Let's back it up even a little bit further for Intel. Yeah, you trade below that price level, it's dicey, man, because you're probably trading right to 35 bucks pretty quickly for Intel, but maybe you scale in. Always nice to see a nice, easy area of support on the chart. And how many times, folks, we got it in October of 2020. We got a flash low in March of 2020. That's where Intel found a bid as well, all the way from 70 bucks almost to 45 or so, 43.63 to be exact. We got down to 42.86 in 2019, and you see, also in 2018, we're in that area as well. So Intel right back to the area, down 4.8%. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, anytime a company is going to be spending money to buy one of their competitors, Arm Limited, maybe a consortium is how they may go into things, uh, but down 4.8%. Let's see how some of the other chip stocks. You got AMD. That's quite a... Uh, parabolic chart if i've ever seen one right amd on a longer term basis man you're trading at 16 dollars at the end of 2018 you're trading at 16 dollars in the beginning of 2019 uh you push 160 on this stock at the end of last year you're basically flat this morning and these markets trying to figure out whether today's a risk on or risk off day they're not quite sure just yet as we have the s p's now negative four points right now at 4370. let's jump around to some of the fang stocks and see how we're trading as we come into the long weekend amazon shares quite a pullback yesterday continuing that pullback down half a percent right now microsoft shares trading up a quarter percent check that one out right now microsoft you're now $60 off the high at Microsoft, man. That's quite a pullback. 70, 70 bucks is a solid 20% haircut. So you trade down to 280, right? And maybe that's where Microsoft is a buy because that's 280 right there on October 4th, folks. You trade down to 280, that's a 20% pullback on this equity. That's a decent pullback on Microsoft for a strong company in a big way. Uh, let's jump to Apple shares. Apple, not quite the pullback in terms of 20%, right? You're only, how far are you off on Apple? 14 bucks? off of Apple, you'd have to be 36 bucks to be 20% off of that equity. And remember, Microsoft crushed it on their earnings. They put it on the daily, right? They crushed it. They gave a lot of it back the next day, but they had some great earnings out there. They've continued to give it back though for Microsoft trading at 291. And you know, Activision Blizzard, the market is telling you that Microsoft is going to face some headwind here because the purchase price on Activision Blizzard is $95. You think that deal's getting done? You can buy Activision Blizzard at 81 right now and you get to sell it for 95 if it gets done. If it doesn't get done, it's trading down to at least $65 probably. So you are what? You're risking about $16, give or take, for the ability to make $14. It's about a 50 50 shot barely in the positive, call it 55-45, that that deal gets done for Activision. If it does, I think it's a good thing, though. In the short term, they're going to have to spend a lot of money. What is it, $70 billion or something like that? Uh, in the longer term, gaming is going to be a big part of the future. It already is for Microsoft, and they're just solidifying their content library there, which is going to be important. And the only reason I say it might not get done is because one of the things I saw for this to get done, trying to deal with antitrust concerns, is that Microsoft said that I believe was the Call of Duty game, which is maybe their biggest. Let's see if they list it here in terms of the company and the games they make. Uh, let's see. Uh, yes, Call of Duty. So they make Call of Duty. That's the biggest one. It's a big game on PlayStation as well. And they've said that they will continue to offer that game on PlayStation. I imagine that eventually that will not be the case. There's no reason why you're going to be running your Xbox platform and have an internal gaming unit that is pushing out games for your biggest competitor, the PlayStation. They have to say that to get it done. Uh, I'm a Microsoft bull. I have some Microsoft and long-term investment portfolios, okay? But of course they're going to say that, man. They're going to say that because if they don't say that, then the market might say, hey, that's that. this is going to be way too anti-competitive if you're buying some of the biggest game makers out there and making sure that you can't even put it on the competing uh, game maker. 
but we'll see. Microsoft trading right now up 0.3%. Stay tuned, folks. When we come back, take a look at some other companies out there with numbers. They're talking about Walmart in the den. They're talking about Salesforce. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year, or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested, or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. As our man Basil Chapman would say, the day is young. Basil's coming up next, folks, live at 10 o'clock. We got, of course, our man Larry Pesavento. He is going to be live, folks, at 11 a.m. this morning. Uh, he will be doing his program. We have Fast Market at 12. Steve Rhodes just did his program live at 8 in the morning, so we'll be playing that live uh, for the replay at 1 o'clock. Dave White. Live with the Power Trading Hour from 2 till 3. Tom O'Brien, my dad, live wraps it up for the final hour of the day. And remember, we're coming into a long weekend, man. In this market, we're catching a bid, folks, just like that. The S&Ps, you just jumped 20 points in the last nine minutes. You trade from a price point of 43.62. We're pushing 25 points now higher from the last nine minutes. NASDAQ 100, you're now right back to where we were at the open, 14,216. Some of these growth companies, man, the turnaround, the volatility these growth companies have when you're dealing with some big multiples, man. Salesforce, you're up 1.2%. This has been quite a pullback, but you just jumped $3 on this stock. Now we have some Salesforce in my newsletter. We've pulled back pretty harshly. You're right back to where you were, folks, in March. The low there, 201.51. You're almost right back at the 618. If you're looking to get in this equity, too, uh, 
You could start scaling in because you got a nice area here. You could wait maybe until you get to the 618 potentially at 190 when you're sitting at 202. Uh, very possible as well. And uh, what was the other ones? Yeah, Airbnb I talked about earlier, man. Talk about the volatility when these markets turn around. Airbnb trades down $7, trades back up almost $7 to 182. You talk about volatility. They're talking about Walmart in the den. I also have some Walmart in my newsletter, Rocket Equities and Options. They had a strong earnings number yesterday. You were accelerating higher at Walmart. Almost trading inverse right now with those growth stocks, right? You spike up to 139.59. You've pulled back a bit as we've seen some of those growth companies accelerate a bit higher. And keep your eye on Bitcoin as well. Bitcoin down to 39,660, uh, back above 40,000 right now in that crude market, sitting at 88.92. All right, folks, thanks so much for tuning in, starting your Friday with me. Stay tuned. Basil Chapman coming up live with the Tiger Technicians Hour next. Have a great weekend. Have a safe weekend, folks. We look forward to seeing you back here on Tuesday. But stay tuned because we got live programming coming up. Basil's up next. We got Larry Pesavento live at 11. Fast Market at 12. Stay tuned, folks. It should be a while. Well, we got markets in positive territory across the board right now. You got crude. Down to buck oh five, you got gold contract down five bucks at 1896. Stay tuned, folks. Basil's coming up right now.